Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is our 793rd day together in the Word of God, and we are in Psalm 115. We did Psalm 116 with Job 7 a couple of days ago because it was such a great accompaniment to that chapter in Job. And here we're going to step back and pick up now Psalm 115. Uh, which is which is a great song to read kind of in the middle of these early chapters of Job because it refocuses our eyes where they should be on the glory of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are so good and you are deserving of all glory. And so, Lord, help us to hear Psalm 115 and take it into our hearts and then pray it with our lives that we might be those who don't seek our own glory, but yours alone. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 115. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory, for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Why should the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear. Noses, but they do not smell. They have hands, but do not feel. Feet, but do not walk. And they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. O oh, Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. O oh, house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear the Lord, Trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the Lord's heavens. But the earth he has given to the children of man. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down in silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Bless. Praise the Lord. 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 Love Psalm 115. It's just a great perspective check, right, on our lives, our focus, the world, its hopes, God's goodness to his people. It's just a great perspective check. That's how I kind of look at it. Uh, and so what, what are the things that we're tempted to lose focus? We're tempted to lose focus by looking at ourselves and thinking with self-pity or um, self-promotion or self-satisfaction or something like that, some sort of self-orientation, right? And so this opening line is great to correct us from that. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. So the first thing we're tempted to look at when we lose perspective is ourselves. And this moves us away from that. The second thing, though, is to look at the world and to feel insecure because of how much the world despises believers or to envy and covet what the world seems to have that we don't seem to have. And this psalm corrects both of those things, both the despising of the world and the things that the world has, the idols of the world that we might be tempted to envy and covet. So it's just a great perspective uh, shift for us, adjustment for us. Why do we give God the glory and not us? Well, it's for the sake of God's steadfast love, his chesed and his faithfulness, this pair is throughout the Psalms, we give thanks to God, we give praise to God, we give glory to God because of these two things over and over again, God's steadfast love and his faithfulness. His steadfast love is his heart toward his own, his heart toward his people, full, free, undeserved, grace, favor, kindness, mercy, justice, all of that coming from the heart of God to his people. And faithfulness means he doesn't change and he keeps his promise. He doesn't change and he keeps his promise. So one is the heart of God and the other is the dependability of God. Because some people, you know, the old Southern saying, oh, bless your heart. And that's that's the thing that says, well, your, your heart's in the right place, right? But your head's full of, you know, 
bread pudding or whatever. Like this is, that's not God. God has a heart toward us that is good, but he's also steadfast and reliable and faithful. So he gets all the glory. And when the world looks at us and mocks and says, where is their God? Why would the world say that? Because you see, Israel didn't have any idols. Weren't supposed to anyway. They didn't have any images of Yahweh. So in their big temple in Jerusalem, in the Holy of Holies, in the inner sanctuary was not a statue of Yahweh. That set the temple in Israel apart from all other ancient temples. All other ancient temples, when you got to the middle of the temple, to the holy place, the sanctuary, the inner sanctum, there was a there was the God, the God they were worshiping, right? A big statue of that God. No such statue in the heart of the temple in Jerusalem. And so the nations would say, where is their God? Look, there's your temple, the house of your God. You go inside and there ain't no God. Where's your God? And the answer is our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. You see, we can't reduce God down to an image. This is why the second commandment forbids the making of images of God because we cannot reduce God down to an image. That's that's just wrong. God is so much greater than that. Our God is in the heavens and he does all that he pleases, period. And so how does that compare to their gods? Well, their gods are just idols. They're just the work of human hands. They have mouths, eyes, ears, noses, hands, feet, sure, but they can't speak or see or hear or smell or feel or walk or talk or do anything. And verse 8 is a stunning indictment. Those who make them become like them, so do all who trust in them. Idol makers and idol trusters become as lifeless and dumb and deaf and blind and helpless as the idols they make and trust in. Wow, that is a stunning condemnation of the idolatry of the world. But it's the truth. God always speaks the truth, even when it's not really what we want to hear, doesn't he? Because he's faithful. His faithfulness speaks the truth to us. So whenever we're tempted to covet the things in the world, just remember the money the world offers, the fame the world offers, the power the world offers, the things the world chases, they don't really make us alive. They're not alive themselves, and they don't make us alive. In fact, if we give our hearts to them, they'll kill us. What should we do instead? We should trust in the Lord. This call here, house of Israel is the whole of God's people. House of Aaron are the priests ministering in the temple. For us, all believers are priests under our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's a call to all of us. We trust in the Lord because he is our help and our shield. He's the one who helps us when we're in trouble, and he's the one who protects us from danger. Now, we're, we're reading Job, right? This is a great psalm in the middle of Job, because Job helps us to understand how not to interpret this. To say that the Lord, Yahweh, is our help and our shield doesn't mean we're never going to face problems. Doesn't mean nothing bad will ever happen to us. It means that we can trust God, that he has good purposes, even when bad things happen, and that we can trust him more than what our eyes can see. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless all of his people, those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. You may be obscure and insignificant, but God will bless you. God will bless you according to his steadfast love and his faithfulness, because he is good. He is the maker of heaven and earth. These idols that the world has, they didn't make anything. They're made by people. You don't worship a made thing. You worship the maker of heaven and earth, right? And so the Lord made heaven and earth. That means everything in heaven belongs to God. On the earth, he's, he's given human beings dominion over the earth. And so while we're here on earth, we are accountable to the God in heaven who made heaven and earth to live not for our own glory, but to his. So we're really cycling back to where we started at the end. 
The heavens are the Lord's heavens. The earth he's given to the children of man. He made heaven and earth. So we should be blessing him. We should be praising him from this time forth and forevermore. So here's the perspective check. Stop living for yourself. Stop looking at the world and get busy praising the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are praiseworthy. There is no one like you in heaven or on earth, for you are the maker of heaven and earth. You are worthy of all of our praise. Help us to praise you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me for Psalm 115. I hope you have a blessed day in the Lord. Mm-hmm.